Good morning. Good morning, saints, children of the Most High God. Welcome. Welcome to Daddy's presence. Our Papa is good. I hope you are hearing me. The volumes are up. Let us know. Sorry to keep you waiting. I think we are two minutes late. So, cheers. Mm. In his presence is fullness of joy at his right and our pleasures forevermore. So we know the score. Take your phone, share the message, turn off your phone, take your pen and paper, and be attentive. You know that we give the word here. So I don't care what the world does. The world was made by the very word of God. That is what is keeping everything together. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Outside of him, we have nothing. That's why you have zero control of the day you die. You can have oxygen tanks, you can try to preserve cells. God created those cells. He determines how long you live, how long or when you go. And don't forget, there is no real death. This thing that we are fighting is only here. <laughs> we all live forever, as a matter of fact. So don't, um, don't fight for this world. Fight for the world to come. Let us, let us do it with wisdom, okay? Let's do it with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I'm switching off my phone so that we can start. Okay. It's a beautiful thing to know the Lord. It's a privilege beyond words to have any any dealings, any relationship, whatever, any association whatsoever with this God that we are talking about here, here on this platform. This God is almighty. He is all glorious. He is perfect. He is holy. He is loving. He is kind. He is, he is abundant in everything, in love, in peace, in hope, in joy, in in anything, whatever you, you come into his presence for, you have it in abundance. So tell me, what are you going to compare him to? Who are you going to compare him to? There's none like him, okay? So it's a privilege to know him because there's nobody, there's no one else you can know that is like him. There is none like our God the creator of heaven and earth. So when we come into his presence, we come with thanksgiving, we come, we come with gratitude, we come with joy, we come with expectation because he is a giver for God so loved the world that he gave. He is a giver, otherwise you wouldn't survive. You will never, if, if human beings had custody of oxygen, those of us, those of you listening to me now, <laughs> I'm sure we will hardly have the money to pay for that oxygen because they will, they will make it only for the elite. Let's, let's, just, let's just settle. Do it or leave it. Do it or leave it. He's not begging you. He owns it all. If you do it, it's for your own good. So make up your mind. Do it or leave it alone. And when you do it, do it with joy. Jesus went to the cross with joy. It is opposite of what we want. We want to feel like it before we do it. No, you, you don't feel like it. Jesus didn't feel like. He did it for love. 
He did it for love. So let us make up our minds. Love is a decision. <laughs> Those of you who think love is a feeling. Love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. It, it is a decision. I want to love this person. It's a decision. It's not, it's not I feel like, oh, I'm in love. Oh, I fall in love. It, those are all lies. The lie from the pit of hell. Let's make up our minds to love God, love ourselves, and love the people around us. Full stop. That's the only law that God has given us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. So if all your heart is for him, 100%, what is left for the devil? Nothing. So first, if you love him, when you love him, when he fills you with his love and you use it and love him back, then you can love yourself. Then you can love the rest. If you don't love him first, you cannot love yourself. Write it down. If you don't love God first with all your heart, you cannot love yourself. If you have not made up your mind to love God, you will never find the love to love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, you can never love the next person. You can only give what you have. We receive and we give. We receive and we give. We receive and we give because on our own, we have nothing. On our own, we have nothing. So if you haven't received it, all the things that he freely gives, he gives freely. That's why we can give freely. So if you have not received, you cannot give. <laughs> that means you, have, you don't have to give. You see, we are empty. He pours in. And we pour out. We are empty. He pours in. And we pour out. Without him. You, you are empty. 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 Okay. That's the decision. Do I want to live a full life? Or do I want to live an empty life? That is my decision. And that's your decision this morning. So. Shall we start? And that just comes. Nicely to our theme of prayer this morning. Today we want to pray and repent for ignorance. <laughs> you see, the Holy Spirit likes to play games with us sometimes. We, this morning we are repenting for ignorance. And trust me, a lot of us are very, very ignorant. If, if not in one thing, in another. So just relax. It's, the Holy Spirit wants you to know. That's why we must repent of ignorance. So as we, as we repent for ignorance, we want to pray, Father, give us wisdom, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. Okay? So we are not just repenting and staying empty. We repent and we are filled up. That's how God works. We say, Lord, I am sorry I did not know this. Now give me the wisdom, give me the knowledge, give me the understanding so I can know because you want me to know. All right. Let's go. Hosea. H-O-S-E-A. If I can find it myself. Let's go, Hosea. They are the small prophets. There you go. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. God says, my people, so you are his people. He calls you his own, yeah? He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is what makes us tumble. Wisdom, knowledge is power. When you are informed, you, you, you have the key. 
Information is key. Knowledge is key. So God loves you and he's looking at you and says, Oh, 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 my people. <laughs> my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I wish they knew. I wish they came to the source of knowledge, of wisdom, of understanding, so I can give to them. Does anyone lack wisdom? Let him ask. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because, see, he gives you the reason. Because you have rejected knowledge. God wants you to know. God wants you to be wise. Because you have rejected knowledge, that's why you perish. That's why you are destroyed. And he says, I also will reject you from being priest uh, for me. Because you have forgotten, you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. What a terrible thing. God is calling us. Come, let me give you knowledge. Let me give you wisdom. Let me help you in that project, in that career, in whatever you do. I, I'm your daddy. I want to help you. I want to see you succeed. But he says, you have forgotten the law of your God. You see, the, the new word I have at the moment is prescribe. It's prescription. God has already prescribed how things should work. If you like, you deviate from it. If you don't like, you work with it. He has prescribed it. There, it's written there. You have forgotten the law of your God. And his law is not tedious. You see, he started with knowledge. He wants you to know. So that you will not be destroyed. If you are in the know, then you are covered. And God wants you to be in the know. So let us repent today. And say, Lord, I am sorry of my ignorance. I am sorry of, of not listening to you, of not taking the prescribed medicine. You have already prescribed what should be done. And I have deviated from that. Repentance means coming back. That's all it means. It's not... It's not about heavy heart. It's not about making your, you sorrowful. No. It's you knowing I have deviated. Now let me return. Let me turn back. That, that's all it means. Because God wants you to come back and receive. He's a giver. He's a giver. He's not, he's not here to punish you. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save. His name is Savior. He didn't come to punish he, come, he came to save. So we want to preach the gospel of joy, of truth, of repentance, of, of redemption, of adoption. God didn't throw us out. We went out. So repentance means coming back. Come back home. Come back home and rejoice. Come back home and be free. Come back home and be wise. Like the prodigal son, that's all it means. You come to your senses, you recognize, wow, <laughs> my daddy has it all. What am I doing here? I better just go because even in my daddy's house, the servants are rich. What am I doing here? I came, I came to, to, to try out life. What a stupid life. Now let me please go back home. That's repentance. That's all it means. Make a U-turn. It's not, it's not making your heart heavy. It's about re recognizing I'm going back home because that's where the joy is. In his presence is fullness of joy. Outside there, there's no joy. That's why your heart is heavy. When you come back home, your heart will not be heavy again. Because that is throwing a party for you as you come home. See, that's what we miss. My people perish because they lack knowledge. They are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
I didn't send you out there, you went out there. If you are wise, come back home. At home, there's always a party. I'm throwing a party for you when you come home. I'm not beating you up when you come home. So the heaviness of heart is in sin, not in his presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. Torment, stress, heaviness of heart, regret, and all that, shame, all that is outside daddy's presence. That's why he's calling you back home. And if you're wise, you come home. That's all we are saying this morning. So I have a few passages for you. And I would counsel you like Jesus says. <laughs> Write it down. So that you can study at your free time. Because everyone is not on the same level of revelation. Some things you will receive readily. Some things your heart will be fighting. Ah, I don't like what she's saying. I'm not, I'm not saying you should like what I'm saying. Yeah, good medicine is mostly bitter at the first, the first instance. But it works when you swallow it. Okay? I'm not saying you should like what I'm saying. That's why I say write it down so that when you are alone, just you and your God, you say, ah, Jesus, that thing that Victoria said, I did not like it. What do you say about it? And he will just gently pat you on your shoulder and he will, he will transfer peace. He will transfer joy. He will transfer understanding. And before you know, you start to see the world with a different light. That's what happens in his presence. Just find yourself in his presence. Victoria doesn't say you should. Don't take my word for it. Find out for yourself. I'm only giving what has been poured in. If it's not poured in, it will not come out. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Luke 23. We are, we are teaching on prayer because unless you cut down all the weed, all the barriers, you cannot enter in. So this is preparation to enter in. <clears throat> Luke 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, not Victoria said, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. That is God's standpoint. He wants to forgive you. But first, you have to repent and confess. He has already forgiven you as a matter of fact. You just have to know it and walk in it. Jesus hung on the cross when everybody expected him to be angry to be, you know, to, to call fire down and, you know. He said, Father, just forgive them. For forgive them. If they knew, if they knew that I was here for them, they wouldn't be doing this. If they knew that, I, that I'm doing this for them, they would be thanking me, not stoning me. So, Father, forgive them. Because I'm higher than what they are doing. Father, forgive them. They know not. Lack of knowledge makes us stumble. When we lack knowledge, that's why we, we stumble, we fumble, we fail. And God is happy. God is a happy God. 
God is a loving God. So he says, Father, forgive them. If they knew it, they wouldn't do it. Last week they were shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This week they are shouting, crucify him. Do you think they know? <laughs> no, they don't know. So Father, let, let it be. Let me just do what I came to do for them. Maybe they'll see it later. See, that's the point. So as he has done it, we learn to do it as well. People offend you. Just pray, forgive, forgive. Let it go, let it go. They know not what they do. If, if, if we know, we wouldn't do it. So that's why we are asking for knowledge today. We repent of ignorance and we ask for knowledge. We repent of ignorance and we ask for knowledge. We repent of ignorance and we ask for knowledge. Don't leave, don't leave it empty. When you remove one, bring in. When you remove the bad, bring in the good. When you remove, so, so that you're, all, you're full. God wants you to be full, not empty. Okay, next, uh, next verse. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And it says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, this is Abram before he, be, before he became Abraham. God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, changed Sarai to Sarah, changed Jacob to Israel, changed Simon to Peter, so changed Saul to Paul. See, God likes to change names because he gives us, by, the, by that name, he gives us our identity. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. And the thing that has just, that has just jumped out to me there is Lord. Lord, he is my Lord. He was Abraham's Lord. Before Abraham, Abraham even became Abraham, before you were born, he is your Lord. Even though he's your father, he's your Lord, he's your king, he's your judge, he's your friend. So we must hold him in high esteem. The Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country. So he prescribes Abraham's future. Abraham was settled. He had his family. He had things going for him. By this time he was married, even though Sarai had no child. But God came in and gave him a prescription. He said, now take this medicine. <laughs> it will be better for you in future. <laughs> Get out of your country. I'm separating you from the known. I'm separating you from, from the comfortable. I'm separating you from your comfort zone. Leave your country. Leave your family. Get out. Get out of your country. Leave your family. Leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. Where are we going? You will see when you get there. <laughs> you just have to trust me along the way. But Lord, I'm good here. I'm happy here. I'm comfortable here. Well, you can stay there and that will die out. Or you can follow me and the growth will be continuous. When you plant a seed, you don't see how it grows. But by and by, it will become a tree. We want to plant today and see the tree tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. Leave what you think you know. What you think you know is ignorance. Today we are repenting of ignorance. We want to receive wisdom, knowledge, understanding. So if you can just leave 
what you are comfortable with. Verse 2 says, I will make you. I will make you a great nation. Here you are in your country, your family, your house. But I'm going to give you a nation. I'm going to make you. You are living in someone's nation now. <laughs> oh, God. You are, you are in, in a country now. You are in your father's house now. You have this family now. But I want something bigger for you. I'm going to make you. Make. You will become. I will make you a great nation. One man. I don't know whether we are getting these things when we read it. Holy Ghost, help us. Help us. Give us. Expand. Expand our capacity. Increase our capacity. Let us get it. Help us to get it. Leave what you are familiar with. Leave what you think you know. I have so much more for you. If you would just trust me. And follow me. My ways are higher than yours. So you will not always understand it. But you have to follow me. So I can help you walk in wisdom. In knowledge. And then I'll give you that understanding. I will make you a great nation. Not just any wimpy nonsense thing. No, a great nation. I will bless you. You see what we are doing? We are wasting time here trying to gather. Gather what we don't even know. And God says, if you follow me, I'm going to bless you. And you won't even know what to do with the blessing anymore. But because we are so stuck in our little tiny brain, what we think we know, we lose out. We lose out. In the real blessing. We lose out of the real blessing. Because we are counting pennies here. And we are happy to count pennies here. Because they are, they are noisy. They are noisy. But the real load of blessing. Is in front. Here we can hear the clutching. The noise. And we miss out. Because he is too noisy. Get the noise out of the way. And start to listen. I will bless you. And make you. Or make your name great. He was called Abraham. He didn't, by this time he didn't know his name was going to be changed to Abraham. It is God who gives the prescription. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you shall be. You shall be a blessing. When people talk of blessing, they'll be talking about your name. When people will, you know when you, you know like brand names. <laughs> I don't want to mention brands. When you talk about a certain brand, immediately you see the product. So that you don't even need to, to mention the product, just call the brand. And everybody knows what you're talking about. I'm going to brand you. So that when people mention blessing, their mind will immediately go to Abraham. I know this is too much for, for some friends. It's staggering mine. It's staggering mine. God said, not human beings said. And those of you who know this book, is that true, yes or no? It's true. This thing has been written for thousands of years already. And it is true today. The seed of Abraham is associated with blessing more than any seed. So God's word is true. 
Even if that's the only thing you believe in this book, believe it, please. God is a God of blessing and he stands on his word. Your poverty, your wretchedness, your shame, your pain is from the devil. The seed of Abraham that is still blessed, are they perfect? No. But God said so. So he keeps his word. Even if you don't believe anything in the Bible, why can't you just believe when God says, I'm going to bless you? Why, why is it so difficult? Oh, because you have to walk with him. Yeah, I know that's the problem. Yeah, because you can't have what I have if you are too far from me. That's why we lose out. Because we reject his law like we just read in Hosea. We refuse to listen to him. We refuse to walk with him because in his presence is all these blessings. You have to walk with him to walk in the blessing. So we miss out and we go and do our own thing and then we blame God. Oh, why are there wars? Why, are there, why is there poverty? Did God put the poverty? No, he did not. May God wake up our spirit. May our spirit man be awake to hear this word. God says, I'm going to make you. It's, it's me who is doing it. Just, just walk close to me and you'll see. I'll make your name great. And you shall be, you shall be a blessing. Not you shall have blessings. Yeah, you, you, will, you will have blessings. I will bless you. When I bless you, that means you are the blessing. That's why people are stingy, because they are not blessed. If you are blessed, you will you, you be free to give because you understand it, it did not come from you. And when you give, it comes back because he's the source. It's because you are, you, you are trying to take care of yourself. So you are trying to hoard. But if you know that somebody says, come with me and I will do it for you, then you are free like a baby. And he didn't stop there. Let's read verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. So you can't ask for one and not the other. And in you all, all means all. In you, one man, all the families of the earth. Not the families of some nation. No, I'm starting something new with you. That mean, that's why you have to come out of what you have known. I'm starting something new with you. And from this moment on, everything is blessed from you. All the families of the earth. Not, not some of the families of the earth. This is God's prescription. What is happening now is not God's prescription. That's the difference. We look around, we see nonsense, and we associate it with God. How? What is happening? The world has nothing to do with this God that we are talking about. He's perfect. He can't create nonsense. So if you want to be part of all the families of the earth, then you walk next to this God, full stop. If you curse what he blesses, you will be cursed. If you bless what he blesses, you will be blessed. So it's your choice.
Balak, uh, uh, ba Balaam and Balak, they, they tried it. He said, I cannot curse whom the Lord has blessed. If you try it, you are, you are just, it's a boomerang. It comes back to you. If you bless what I bless, then blessing comes back to you. If you try to curse what I have blessed, the curse is coming back to you. It's what you dish out that you get back. So nobody is doing it to you. You are doing it to yourself. That's the magic. <laughs> All right, sense. I don't know how to say it for it to make more sense. I'm trying. There's no sentiment in this. It's a prescribed way. It is medicine. Take it and get well soon. There's no sentiment. Don't be sentimental about it. God says it. I've blessed this thing. If you follow me and bless this thing, you will be blessed. But if you try to curse this thing, that curse is bouncing back to you. It's as simple as that. Let's go to Isaiah 60. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 12. For the nation and kingdom which will not serve you, shall perish. Very clear, clear, simple words. Because I'm making you a nation, and I'm making you a blessing to the nations, any nation, any kingdom, which will not serve you, that kingdom, that nation will perish. Because they are not blessing what I'm blessing. They are trying to curse what I'm blessing. So they will take back their curse. He says, and those nations shall be utterly, utterly ruined. And you know what Jesus says, give and it shall be given to you full measure, press down. Yeah, that's the thing. So you release one curse, multiple curses come back to you. That's the trouble. People don't get it. You release a, a seed of blessing. More seeds of blessing come back to you. You release a seed of curse. More seeds of curses come back to you. So why are you not making up your mind what you are dishing out? Why can't you realize that you are the author of your life? What you speak forms your life. I shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass. Because I'm a king. Don't be carried away by sentiments. It's not about you. God has already prescribed it. And that's how it is. Just, just look around you. It's obvious. It's clear. That's what is happening. What we are reading now is what is happening around the world. People will say, oh, I don't believe in God. Oh, I'm not a Christian. You don't need to be a Christian. He, the same God that created you created me. And his word stands. You can accept it you, and you can live it. It's up to you. The one that created heaven and earth. That's the one I'm talking about. He's the one who made this prescription. He has already written it and given it to everybody equally. Some of us take it, some of us reject it. It's up to you. But the result will still be the same. 
It's a divine covenant. It's a divine covenant. The nations and the kingdoms that will not serve you shall per perish. They shall perish. Because they are doing it to themselves. They are cursing what I'm blessing. And it's my choice who I bless. Is your eye bad because I'm good? That's what Jesus asked. They shall be utterly, utterly ruined. Why? Because they are fighting their maker. They are refusing the law of the Lord, rejecting the law of the Lord, rejecting to take the prescribed medicine. There's no sentiments here. The word of God is eternal. That's why it's a blessing. It's a privilege to know it. It works whether you know it or not. There are people who are not Christians. They still apply the, the, the principles of, of this law and it works for them. You don't need to be a Christian for it to work for you. Psalm 105, verse 6 to 15. I'm bringing these things so that our, we can relax our hearts. Because you cannot pray with a heart that is full, 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 full of rubbish, full of nonsense, full of unforgiveness, full of anger, full of nonsense. Empty it out. Just know that it's not about you. It's not about them either. If Jesus says, Father, forgive them, that's what you say as well. Just work it out. So Holy Spirit, help me. I release them. I release them to you. It's not about me. Psalm 105. I'll read from verse 6 to verse 15. O oh, seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. God's divine choice. <laughs> you can believe it. You don't have to believe it. He chose. He saw out of all the people in the world of that day. He looked and then he said, there, Abraham, come. I'm taking you out. I'm starting something new with you. Out of all the people in the world, it is his choice. Abraham was not perfect. No. But when we are with him, he perfects us. None of us is perfect on our own. He perfects us as you choose to walk with him. He's your covering. David sinned, Peter sinned, Paul sinned. None of us is perfect. Yet, God says, you are righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Not on our own. O oh, seed of Abraham, his seven you children, of Jacob, his chosen ones. Verse 7. He is the Lord our God. There we go again. He is Lord and he is God. His judgments are in all the earth. Not where I choose to believe it. No, it's all over. The same law covers all. All the earth. That's why this thing was written before we came. So that we cannot say we don't know. It was there before you came. So look for information. Look for knowledge. Look for understanding. If you are messing up, it's because you want to mess up. Because the, the ability to know is available. 
Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Why are you not receiving? Because you are not asking. Why are you not finding? Because you are not seeking. Why is the door not open? Because you are not knocking. So it's up to you. He is the Lord our God. His judgment are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. Guys, you have said it before. I'm so grateful I did not write this book. It is a covenant he made with one man. And he remembers his covenant forever in all the earth. He prescribed one law for every human being. He remembers his covenant forever, the word, the word. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. He says it once. You can bank on it. <laughs> it's not going to change. It's not fluctuating. It's the same. Yesterday, today, forever. That's why his name is I am. Not I was, not I will be. I am. I am yesterday. I am today. I am tomorrow. I am. I am. I am. No fluctuation. He remembers his covenant. He said it once and that's what it is. You like it. You believe it. You don't like it. Fight it. You are fighting yourself. <laughs> that, that's a sad thing. People are actually fighting themselves and they don't know. So sad. Verse 9, the covenant which he made, the covenant, it's a covenant. It's not a flippant word. Oh, I love you, baby. Oh, I love you, baby. I love you. Tomorrow is like, oh, get out of my sight. I love another one now. I don't love you anymore. Forget these things. The covenant which he made with Abraham. So by, that, by this time, the name had changed to Abraham. And his oath to Isaac. And confirmed it to Jacob for a statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant. Everlasting. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's only about him. Whom he chose to make this covenant with. Abraham wasn't perfect. No, no, no. He is just God's divine choice. Did uh, King Charles choose to be born a king? No. He was just born a king. Divine choice. So if you like, you can be envious of King Charles. He's not going to change his position. See what I mean? You can say anything you like about King Charles. He was born into that royal family and that's what it is. Is he perfect? No. Is your big ring going to change it? No. That's what it is. Why can't we learn and just be still and know that he alone is God? You can bicker about God's people or whatever you like. He's not going to change it. If you love yourself, agree with what God says yes to. His name is yes and amen. 
So if you say yes and amen, you are on his side. Whatever you say, Lord, yes and amen, then it's good. But if, if you try to fight the yes and amen, then I'm sorry for you. That's the, that is human problem. That's the problem of humanity. We are fighting ourselves and we don't know it. He remembers his covenant forever. The word, one word and it stands forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. That thousand generations just means like forever and ever. The covenant which he made with Abraham. Not a flippant word that he spoke because he was drunk. A covenant which he made with one man. He transferred it as an oath to his son Isaac. He said, what I said to your father, I said the same to you. He transferred it to the grandson. Confirmed it. He made a covenant with Abraham. It was an oath. He transferred to Isaac. And he confirmed the same to Jacob for a statute. To Israel as an everlasting covenant. Go and change it if you want. You can't. Very unfortunate that people are trying to change it. Saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan. That's why I'm saying there's no sentiment here. It's, the word has been prescribed forever and ever. Everlasting covenant. He said it to Abraham, he said it to Isaac, he said it to Jacob. To you I will give the land of Canaan as an allotment of your inheritance. Why? Because you obey me. When I say leave your people, you left and followed me. So I cannot take you from something and leave you empty. No, if I take you from something, I'm, I'm going to give you something better. And the earth is mine, so I can give you whatever I want. It's mine, it's mine, right? I took you from somewhere and I put you somewhere. And I said, from here, start to increase, start to expand. I've given it to you. And everything works around that. It's an allotment of your inheritance. Did Abraham work for it? No. <laughs> he was told to leave what he had. So whatever he got here, he was given, given. It's an inheritance because it belongs to God. So he gives it to his children, whosoever he wants. Verse 12, listen to that. When they were few in number, so it, it doesn't matter how it started. He gave it to them when they were few in number. Indeed, very few. You couldn't have called that family a nation. No, you only saw a, a, a few people. You think the Bible lacked what to say when he said, when they were few in number, indeed, very few. To make, to make you think, yes, these were just a handful of people that God gave that land to. And there were strangers in that land. A few, a few people. But God said, I will make you a nation. This book was not written today. Ask, ask God to forgive you. Repent of your ignorance. And ask God for knowledge. Because it's here. He's, God is the source of anything and everything you want. Repent of your ignorance. Because you've been fighting yourself. And cursing yourself.
I gave them that allotment as an inheritance when they were few in number, indeed very few. And they were strangers in that land. Is it clear, yes or no? They were strangers in that land because I'm putting you there. Take over. I'm giving this place to you. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no one to do them wrong. God protected them. He knew there were few. He knew they couldn't fight. So God fought for them. God protected them. And he's still protecting them today. Just fall on your knees and cry out, God, forgive me for my ignorance. Because the, the medicine had already been prescribed. I did not take it. He permitted no one. Remember how Jericho sealed itself in? Walled themselves in? He said, look at these people. They, they did not even throw one stone. They only made, ah! And everything came down. <laughs> You know the frequency, you know those people who can sing and, and they'll use their, the frequency of their voice and, and shatter a glass. That's what happened. They shattered the walls of Jericho with a shout. Shout of victory. It belongs to God. You cannot, you cannot wall it in. He permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake. He was a father to them. He was their protector. He was their warrior. He fought on their behalf. And he said in verse 15, Do not touch my anointed ones. I have anointed these people and have pulled them out from where they were, and I'm doing something new with them. I have set them. Anointing means they, are, they were set apart. They didn't even know what was happening around them. That's why God says, yeah, you won't understand. Just follow me. Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Stop fighting. They are mine. Stop fighting yourself. I've called you to be my own. So why are you fighting to run away from me? It's the same, same message. God is calling you. Come, let's go. Come, let's go. He said, you're allowing your eye to deceive you on this side. What are you seeing there? Something that is going to be over tomorrow? When God is saying, come, come with me and I will make you into something your mind cannot even contain. We allow our eyes to deceive us when God has something bigger for us. You know that popular uh, picture? It's all over on the internet. When, when Jesus holds a big teddy bear behind him and this little girl stands here with a smaller teddy bear and he's saying, G give me your teddy bear. And the girl is like, I'm not sure about that. She doesn't know that the moment she gives that little one, that he's giving him a bigger one or a high bigger one. That's how blind we are. And God will not show you until you trust him. He will not show you until you leave where you are and follow him in trust, in faith. Knowing that he can never cause you harm. So if he says, come, he's taking you for something better, bigger, greater. He can never take you from what you have to a smaller thing. Never, never. But we are so blinded. Mine, mine, this is mine, mine. 
Yeah, stay there. You stay there, you lose out. And a lot of people are losing out. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why you are hearing this message today. And all this is in preparation for your prayers. Even if this is the only thing we are going to share today, it's fine with me. How can you be making noise every day thinking you are praying and you are not doing what God says do? Get up from where you are. Just follow me. Let's walk together. Oh Lord, but I don't know where we are going. Yeah, you are not supposed to know. Let me protect you. Let me cover you. Let me lead you. Let me guide you. Let me provide for you. But we allow our little senses, worldly, empty sense, to steal from us. Renounce what you think you know today. Because God is covering you. Once you agree to go with him, he says, touch not my anointed. He's speaking to kings on your behalf. Don't, don't touch that one. If you try, you are, you are digging your grave. There's no sentiment here. It's a law that has already been written. It's medicine that has been prescribed to all, to all the peoples of the earth. Love your neighbor. Pray for them. Don't be sentimental about anything. God said it, not a human being. So if God said it, no human being can change it. Not the God that I serve. If, if demons said it, then maybe you can change it. But if this God said it, you cannot change it. If you agree with him, then he'll do something, make something out of it for you. <clears throat> Mark chapter 4. Let's do that one. Gospel of Mark chapter 4. I'll read verse 21 to 25. Mark 4, 21 to 25. Also, he said to them, so you've heard enough, you've heard a lot. But he's still speaking. <laughs> also, in case you thought it's over, also, I love the word. <laughs> you see, this is when I, I, wish, I say, I wish I wrote it because it's like a continuation of what I did. I, I, did, did I see that coming? No, I'm just as surprised as you are. Also, so if you think, oh, let Victoria end it now. God says, no, listen, <laughs> listen I have other things to say to you. <laughs> Also, he said to them, is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Do you light a lamp and go and hide it? No. Is it not to be set on a lampstand? You light a lamp. You want it to shine in the room that everybody can see. And so he continues, for there is nothing hidden. That's why I'm saying this book. Is, is there for everyone to read. God is not hide, trying to hide anything from you. That's why I put these things down long before you came. Nothing hidden which will not be revealed. Nor has anything been kept secret but that it should come to light. Do you want to walk in darkness or do you want light to shine on your path? Do you want to know or do you want to live in darkness? Oh, this is where I was born. Oh, let me bury my head. Or do you want to find out in the light? Nothing has been kept secret. It must come to light. Verse 23. If any, that, you see, this, this is what I love. He said, I'm not telling you to believe it. If you have an ear, if you heard anything that was said today, if anyone has an 
he has ears to hear, let him hear. It's up to you. This is what I love about the Bible. This is what I love about God. There is no force to anything. You like it, you take it. If you don't like it, leave it. But you will pay the price for what you choose. It will either bless you or curse you. Jesus said, if anyone, anyone, if, 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 if anyone. So it's open to anyone. If anyone has ears to hear. That's why he said, also he said. So I've said a lot, but I'm saying this again. And by the way, <laughs> if you think you have ears, then use them. If you think you have ears, use them. Or you can cover them, you can block them. If anyone has ears to, ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 24, then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. So even as you are hearing, don't come with your pre-conceived uh, ideas. Open your heart to receive truth. Don't, don't hear what you want to hear. Hear what is being said. Hear with your heart open. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, that means the level that you lean in to hear, it will be measured to you. That means if you hear and you want to understand, understanding will be given. But if you hear so that you can take it and argue and make noise, that's what you get back. Multiply two. Arguments. Oh, Jesus, thank you that I did not write the Bible. Oh, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us to get it. Help us to get it. Take heed. Don't just listen anyhow. Clear your heart. Clear your mind. Empty out. Leave your people. Leave your country. Come out alone. Make space for the new. Let me be your new. Let me make something new in your life. Take heed what you hear. Because with the same measure you use, the, the, the level of attention that you give, if you pay attention, <laughs> attention will pay you back. But if you say, oh, what, what are they talking about? That's what you get back. With the same measure, you use to listen. It will be measured to you. You get what you give. You dish out good, you receive good. You dish out evil, you receive evil. Full stop. Why are you wondering that only bad things are coming to you? It's because that's what you dish out. And to you who hear, <laughs> those of you who are paying attention, what does it say? More will be given. That's how it's been prescribed, people. I'm just reminding you, I'm a vessel that God is using today to remind you of what has already been 
written, prescribed thousands of years ago. Oh, this is not new. Nothing you see is new. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. So don't wake up and tell me you can do it differently. No, it's been prescribed for the whole earth. The same yesterday, the same today, the same tomorrow. It's, a, it's an everlasting covenant. Did you see God come back and say, Oh, when I created the earth, I didn't put enough power in the sun. Let me add some power. No, he did it once and it's done. The only thing that is happening to the earth is that it's increasing. Of course, everything about God increases. It's abundant. Even though some people think that the earth is dying out. <laughs> what is dying is due to sin. But you cannot stop God. You cannot kill what God did not kill. So just look around. Sodom and Gomorrah was dead, but another side was flourishing. Look, look away from yourself. Repent of ignorance. Repent of ignorance. Just say, God, forgive me. I did not know. And Jesus will say, yes, I prayed that prayer for you already. Father, forgive them for they know not. Jesus has already prayed that prayer for you. Just accept it. You are ignorant. Father, forgive me. I have been so ignorant of your ways, of your will, of your plans, even for me. Lord, forgive me. Jesus says, well done. I prayed that prayer for you already. So now you say yes and it's done. That's why my name is Yes and Amen. You are not starting anything new. Trust me, you are not. If you get stuck here, <laughs> look around. You find the door is already open. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. The more you are willing to learn, the more you will learn. The more you are looking for wisdom, the more wisdom you will get. The more you are looking for knowledge, the more knowledge you will get. The more you are looking for understanding, the more understanding you will get. The more you are looking for evil, the more evil you will get. Make up your mind. Your papa can do that for you. Your ancestors can do that for you. They were ignorant too. God says, come away. Let me change your life. Come with me. Verse 25. For whoever has, to him more will be given. So if you have wisdom, because God says my people are destroyed, they perish due to lack of knowledge, yeah? But you seek knowledge, and then you have, say, so Lord, give me knowledge, give me understanding. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my ignorant ways. Forgive me. Take, take ignorance away from me. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding. God says, the more you are asking, the more you are getting. Whoever has, verse 25, to him more, more will be given. Because you are asking me to give you good, I will give you. But if you choose to, to have evil and, and, and you keep asking for more evil, that's what you'll get. And that's what it is. Whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So if you don't allow God to fill you up, what happens? You are becoming empty and empty and emptier and emptier. That's what it, that's what it means. Because you don't want to receive, you are 
emptying yourself out because you are not self-sustainable. You are not self-sustained. We receive whatever we have. Every time we, you breathe in fresh air, you breathe out. If you don't breathe in again, if you think, oh, I've, I've taken a breath. I'm going to live with that for one week. <laughs> you see? See, when, get practical with these things. Ask God to make you see. To help you see. The one that has more is given. The one that refuses to have even the little they have is gone. It's taken away. God says it's what you want that you get. So make up your mind. Forget sentiments. Make up your mind to live. God wants you to live. The enemy comes to steal, kill, destroy. Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Abundant life. Whatever I give to my children, I give them in excess. I am abundant. If only they will come to me and receive. If only they will come to me and receive. Receive. You receive in his presence. It's an inheritance. You did not work for it. Last but not least, <laughs> Psalm 122. Two. Psalm 122. I'll just quickly read. <clears throat> A song of ascent of David. I was glad. Finally. Now I know. Now I'm glad. When they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How ignorant I've been. Now I know. So next time, I'll be eager to, list, to read the Bible. I'll be eager to search out the Bible. I'll be eager to go to church so that I, my, my, my knowledge can, can be replenished. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Only those who know their God know where they stream to. See? You can't have different streams in different streams. You have, you know, like streams going their own way. Different stream will go that way. Different stream will. So when you know where you belong, who, who your tribe is, then you, you, you follow your tribe. There. Verse 4. Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Are you the tribe of the Lord? That says, God, I want your will that is in heaven to be done here on earth. I prescribe to your will. I subscribe to your will. I subscribe to heavenly culture. I subscribe to heavenly ways. To the testimony of Israel. To give thanks to the name of the Lord. It's all about God, people. It's not about you. You are just enjoying <laughs> what he has already done. That's why you, you should be grateful. Verse 5. For thrones are set there for judgment. Uh-oh. The thrones of the house of David. <laughs> Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. <laughs> May they prosper. 
Read it for yourself. May they prosper who love you. If you love what God loves, you will prosper. I've said it. You don't need to be sentimental about it. The word has been written before you came. None of us wrote it. Nobody in this generation wrote it. May they prosper. So if you want prosperity, then subscribe to what God has prescribed. He says there, I'm sure any child can understand that. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem so that you may prosper. So that you may prosper. You are looking for prosperity in the wrong places. Because you are neglecting, you are rejecting God's laws like we read in Hosea. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you will be cursed. It's already written. Peace be within your walls. Prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Now that I know, then I know how to pray. I know what to say. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek you are good. Not because I feel like it. Not because you are good to me. Not because you are perfect. Because of the house of the Lord our God. I choose to seek your peace. I'm not doing it because you are good to me. I'm just doing what God says I should do. And I'm doing it so that I will prosper. Because I love prosperity. I want prosperity. I want to live a peaceful life. So I pray for peace for you. I want my life to be, good, to be full of goodness. So I wish you what is good. What you give is what you receive. You want peace? Pray for peace for people. You want love? Pray for love for people. You want joy? Pray for joy for people. Whatever you give out, you will get it. That's why I'm saying these things are not emotions. They are decisions. I decide to forgive. I decide to love. I decide to pray. It's a decision. Not, I'm not praying because I feel like or when I feel like I pray anyhow. I don't love because I feel like loving you. I love you anyhow. It's a decision. I've made up my mind to love you. And that's what it is. You can annoy me, but I still love you. It, I've, I've decided to love you. That's why Jesus could hang on the cross and say, Father, forgive them. After all that he did for them. And they decided that he fired. He knew why he came. So thank God nobody tried to save Jesus from the cross. And he was loving enough to say, Father, just forgive them. I, I know I came to help them. If they don't recognize it, that's fine. I will still do what I came to do. Because my word is given once and it holds for all eternity. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not even a dot in my word will pass away. My people are destroyed 
due to lack of knowledge. Not because the knowledge is not available. It's because they refuse to get it. So today we will not be ignorant anymore. Declare to yourself, I will not be ignorant anymore. I refuse to be ignorant. Father, I thank you for revealing these things to me today. I repent of my ignorance. I take hold of your wisdom. I take hold of your knowledge. I take hold of your understanding. Fill me up. Lord, fill me up. Lord, fill me up. Take away what is not of you in my life. And fill me with all of you, Lord. Thank you for this revelation. Thank you for this eye-opening word. Thank you for taking away my shame, taking away my ignorance, taking away my confusion. Oh, why is it this? Why is it that? Now I can see. Now I know why. Because when I give out good, I receive good. If I give out evil, I receive evil. Father, from today, I make up my mind to only give out good, to only love, because I love with your love. I bless with your blessing. I live with your life. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's already 12 midday. I think we will just use, I might just introduce the topic and we use it as a communion topic, okay? The topic of our day, the title for our day's message should be you give them. You give them. Give them because you have. Don't be stingy. <laughs> I have blessed you to be a blessing. You give them. Somebody comes to you, give it to them. Because when you empty out, I'm going to fill it up. Let's quickly read that and use it for communion, okay? Mark chapter 6. If anyone has an ear, or, in, or if anyone has ears, let him hear. The word of God is what it is. Let's just ask for the peace in our heart to be able to receive it. Mark 6. I will read from verse 30. Mark chapter 6, from verse 30 to verse 30, to verse 44. Let's be quick. Let's use this for communion, okay? Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, too much coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, that came out of the boat, and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. What did he do? He began to teach them many things. God is about you knowing. 
if you don't know, whatever he gives you to eat will be wasted too. <laughs> you are taught before you are fed. He didn't just see them and, and break the bread. No, he taught them first. Are you willing to learn from the master? That's why I said, don't just take the passages I give you. If you, what I'm saying is, is turning your stomach after, after this, just go sit down. Speak with your master. Let him teach you. Receive his peace so that you can learn properly, not your preconceived ideas. He saw them. He was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, <laughs> and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. They just ran here empty-handed to you. They didn't prepare for this long message. <laughs> They came empty stomach. They just saw you and they ran to you. Now you fill them with the bread of life. But their physical stomach is still empty. Verse 37. But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. Have you not been listening to what I've been teaching? I've not just been teaching them. I've been teaching you too. <laughs> Don't tell them to go away. You give them something to eat. Have I not given you the identity that you are kings? If you are king, then you must have. Give them something to eat. Don't send them away empty-handed. Nobody goes to the king and walks away empty-handed. You know that. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy? See human mind. <laughs> Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread? Look at these thousands of people. 200, worth, uh, 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat. That's the amount, the least amount we will, we will need to have to be able to feed this crowd. Jesus looks at them. I'm sure he would have said, oh, these people, how long shall I be with you? <laughs> How much longer will I be with you guys before you know who you are in me? So verse 38, but he said to them, how many loaves? Let, let's forget about the 200 denarii. Just tell me, what do you have? <laughs> how many loaves do you have? Go, go, just go and check. Go and see. And... When they found out, they said, five, that's five loaves, and two fish. Uh, that's all we have, Lord. Come on. Well, that can't even feed me. Talk off. That's all we've got. So Jesus, in, within himself, is nodding. He says, okay. Then he commanded them, okay, that, that, that's good enough for me. He commanded them to make them all sit. All. All means all, people. All means all. He commanded them to make them all sit down in groups or on the green grass. Think of Psalm 23. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes you sit down in green parts. Everything around him is cool, nice. Verse 40. So they sat down in ranks, in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, what did he do? He looked up to heaven. That's where your blessing comes from. Not your grinding and hustling. <sighs> 
he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. Among them all. Everyone is called to this table. Everyone is called to this dinner. Everyone is invited. All means all. The tribe of God is a tribe of God that we just read. Do you belong to the tribe of God? God Almighty. That means all colors, all language, all sizes, whatever you are, whatever language you speak. The Lord is God of all and all. Everyone is invited to this dinner. They didn't start to segregate. Oh, you, you, you ran here when you saw Jesus. You are, you are, you are, not, you are not a Jew. You are a foreigner. Nobody's, nobody can. You, you think only Jewish people were there? Use your, use your mind. You think the people that saw Jesus and ran, this multitude that we are talking about, thousands of people, you think they were only all Jews? You see how we miss out? Because we are segregating where God never segregated. He divided among them all. Verse 42 says, So they all ate and were filled. They all ate. Foreigner and Jews alike. Whoever was there. That's why Jesus says, Whosoever. Whosoever. God is the God of the whole earth. Why can't we get it? You, you are fighting yourself. Just agree with the yes and amen. And it's good. Bless what God blesses. And you'll be blessed. They all, they all ate. I did, it, nobody said, mm, no, no, you, you, you are from Samaria. You are not allowed here. They all ate. Verse 43, and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. Not counting women and children. Let us wake up people. It's not about us, not at all. Leave the sentiment, leave the local tradition. Subscribe to heavenly tradition. Subscribe to heavenly values for your own good. I want us to, in our spirit, like Jesus told his disciples there in verse 31, come aside, come, come with me. Take a moment to go away and rest with me. Remember this, this scene is written after John the Baptist was beheaded. So they would have been weary, they were working physically hard, and then they would have heard this, this uh, uh, news that John the Baptist was beheaded. So mentally they were also depleted. And Jesus says, let's, let's, let's take a retreat. Let us rest from this hard work and from this bad news. There's, there's been too much coming and going. Let us rest. It's written there. If you read verse, verse 31. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. 
Jesus is not asking you to work 24-7. He's saying, calculate in, take time for, for rest. Take time to eat. That's why at the end of the teaching, there had to be food on the table. So his plan had not really changed. It looks like, oh, Jesus just wanted to go and rest with his disciples and all these people came. Whatever you do doesn't change God's plans. <laughs> He's still God. He works it out. So other people came. He had compassion on them. And he knew what they needed first. He taught them. Be willing to learn. That's where your growth comes from. That's where your satisfaction comes from. That's where your peace comes from. That's where your supply comes from. He taught them first. He had to enlighten them. My kingdom is not like this world. My ways are not like yours. So when I teach you, listen well. It's, it's, it's something you've not heard before. So open up and receive because with the measure you open up to receive, it will be given to you. If you listen, if you're just sitting there and you block yourself, you get nothing. Unless you're open to listen, you won't receive. So he taught them first before he fed them. You are looking for the food and you are refusing to be taught. You refuse the laws of God, Hosea said. That's why you perish. That's why you work hard and nothing happens. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to reverse it. <clears throat> we need to change the way we think, the way we do things. If you were that good, why did Jesus have to die? Did he die a stupid death? He wants to bless you. And it's not about what you see. It's what he can do with what you have, with the little you have. That's why he had to tell Abraham, leave, leave all you have, just, just come. I'm going to do something new with you. So that you don't rely on what you know. Be open to the new. All God wants is that we, we say at the end of the day, glory be to God. Thank God I listened. Thank God I followed you. Oh, thank you, I followed you. It's, it's, it's something we really need to look into. Let us go to the communion. Take it as a time of rest. Let your soul rest. Let your spirit rest. Don't always run, 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 run and let things bother you too much. Relax in the presence of God. You cannot lose out. Trust me, somebody who went to work these two hours has gained nothing compared to what you have gained. They think they are going to, oh, it's Sunday, I'm going to make over time. They'll spend that money like that. But you, you've gained wisdom. The wisdom you've gained now, you can apply. On Monday when you go to work, what they did today, you can do double. Because God knows which doors to open for you. 
that they were trying to open with their own effort. You cannot ever lose when you spend time with Almighty God. If you are worshipping demons, that's a different story. I'm talking about this God. Father, we thank you for the word that you've spoken to us today. Thank you for every seed you've planted in us today. We know that they will grow. We know that we will be blessed. And we are already blessed because we've heard things that we did not know before. Thank you that you want us to know. It's not so much about the physical food that we are eating. You teach us the word of life, the bread of life, so that we are always satisfied. Our spirit man is fed. And when our spirit man is satisfied, we will know how to take care of the physical man. Because the disciples didn't need to go and buy bread. The bread was within. The kingdom is within us. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right and our pleasures forevermore. He makes a way where there's no way. He causes all things to work out for good for those who love him. And those who are the called according to his purpose. So we succeed in his presence. We prosper in his presence. So Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching all these things today. Thank you for allowing us to call you Father, call you Lord, call you God, call you King. Thank you that even though you are our Lord and our King, and we honor you and we worship you. You are still our friend. You are still our brother. But we will not treat you as if you are the same as us. Because you are still Lord. It's a privilege that we can call you friend. It's a privilege that we can call you brother. But we still honor you as Lord, as King, as God, and we worship you. Thank you for giving us of yourself. Thank you for loving us enough to forgive us before we even asked. The antidote was already built in. We just need to access it. Forgiveness has already been paid for by the blood of the, of the blemishless Lamb of God. We just need to come to the place of repentance and enter into forgiveness. Enter into the blessing. Thank you, Father, that you hold nothing against us. As long as we come to you in your prescribed way, which is not burdensome. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to earth and becoming man for man. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. That you are here teaching us, reminding us, helping us, guiding us, counseling us so that we can walk in the blessing that has already been prescribed. We worship you, Father. For God so loved the world, all humanity. 
that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, anyone, anywhere, all peoples, whoever believes in, believes in him will not perish. And the perishing is in the lack of knowledge. But you want us to know so that we can have everlasting life because you've made an everlasting covenant with us already. So Father, we thank you. Like Jesus did, we bring these gifts and we look up to you and we say thank you for these gifts. Thank you for supplying seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Thank you that all good things come from you. Thank you for giving us the wisdom to be able to repent and to come home and receive today. Thank you for the abundance that you have poured into our lives today. Abundance of wisdom, abundance of knowledge, abundance of understanding. Because we have opened ourselves up to know. Because you say, take heed how you hear. Take heed how you hear. Do you really want to hear? Because when you want to hear, you will receive wisdom. You will receive knowledge. You will receive understanding. So Lord, we receive above and beyond today. We receive of you through this communion. Thank you that you don't just give us things. You give us yourself. You give us yourself. <laughs> As you are, so are we. You want us to be one with you. You mingle yourself with us. Inseparable. Thank you, Father. For your love. For humanity. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. And so at the last supper, Jesus took bread. Gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and gave to the disciples and said, This is my body, which is given up for you. And they took it in wonderment and they ate. That's what I'm saying. You will not always know. They were wondering, What is he talking about? This is his body. I mean, he's been saying it a long time already, or for some time already. Then at the end of the supper, he took the cup of wine, looked up, thanked the Father, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my blood of the covenant. And there we go again. The covenant I made with Abraham in Genesis, I'm fulfilling it with you today. It's one word, then same word here. Doesn't change. Everlasting covenant. This is my blood that is shed for you so that sins may be forgiven. You ask for forgiveness, for ignorance, it's done. Just wash yourself with my blood, drink my blood, and you are in me as righteous as I am, as perfect as I am. I give you of myself. That's mind-boggling. Almighty God. Father, we thank you. We can never thank you enough anyway. We can't. That's why I'm saying no Christian. If you know you are a Christian, you have zero, zero right to frown. Zero, zero right to, to stay angry. Let me say it that way. You can't. How? Thank you, Father. For all that you've done for us. 
We can never thank you enough. We live to be grateful to you. Because we live to enjoy your presence. Thank you for giving us of yourself. And giving us all things. Making us a blessing. So that we can feed thousands. You don't need to go buy food for them. Just bless what you have and give. They come from me. I am the source. It's not an external source. It's an internal source. Father, help us to see this mystery. To know this mystery. Give us this wisdom, this knowledge, this understanding. And take away every form of ignorance from us. Thank you that you want us to know. We bless your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ. Let's drink to the mystery of all mysteries. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Open up, open up your ancient doors. Just open up your ancient doors. Let the King of Glory come in. Open up, open up, open up. Let him feel you. Let him bless you. He's the Prince of Peace. He's your daddy. He's your friend. He's your lover. He's your guide. He's your teacher. He's your everything. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you that you hold nothing against us. That you paid the price. <laughs> so you paid it all. You paid it all, Lord Jesus. There's nothing left to be paid. Nothing left to be done. We just accept what you did. And we walk in that freedom. So we bless your name. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Saints. Let's close shop. <laughs> let's close shop. Remember. During the week, what you heard now, there's more where that came from. God doesn't stop speaking. The question is, do you want to hear? Do you want to hear? He's speaking truth. He's speaking love. He's speaking peace. He's speaking joy. He's giving you of himself. Do you want it? That's why there's more opportunities during the week. Tuesday, 6 p.m. UK time, you, you, the youth Bible study. Don't tell me you, have, you haven't got 30 minutes. It's what you want that you get. Take heed what you hear. What, what, whatever you open up to, that's how much will be filled. If you open up 10%, 10% will be filled. If you open up 30, 30 will be filled. If you open up 50, 50 will be filled. It's what you open up to. You see? So you decide. How your life works out. All right. 
Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's when we have the general Bible study. All this happened on Zoom. 9 p.m. Thursday night is the altar of prayer. Where you come, you bring your petition, your supplications. You make your desires known to God. He's your father. He wants to talk to you. It's not as if he doesn't know, but he wants relationship. He wants relationship. So come and talk to him yourself. Friday night, 10 p.m. So we have two services on Friday. 7 till 8 is, or 7 until 8 is Bible study. 10 until 11 is the fire hour of prayer. That's where you come and you are replenished and you are renewed and you are resurrected. <laughs> you know, sometimes the, the weak can kill some of us. So you come and you are resurrected, replenished. And then you receive all this new download from the fire altar. You get consecrated. Your mind is renewed. So you are open to receive. You Because you know already. But Jesus says, those who know, more will be given. You read that in Mark, right? So you come. You're already gold. But... To make the gold purer, you put it deeper into the fire. That's why it's called fire hour of prayer. So you are purified. Because this world, there's too much <laughs> coming and going. <laughs> I love that. There's too much coming and going and too, mu too much noise. You need a place. Jesus says, come away with me. Let's go and rest. Rest, talk, and eat. Rest, talk, and eat. Rest, talk, and eat. That's what life is all about. <laughs> that is what life is about. Yeah, but you have to work hard. I know we work hard, but we don't strive. You see? We work hard, but we don't strive. When you work hard, then you, are, you, you have to also plan the rest. That's the point. Work hard, but then work in the rest time. Okay? Come away and rest with me. So that's it for from me. Give to the work of the Lord if you like. You know, this thing is not by force. What you give will be multiplied and given back to you. If you give good, good comes back to you. You give bad, bad comes back to you. God forbid that we will choose to give bad. You know, people, people who do it, do it because they don't know. That's the bottom line. Yeah? That's the bottom line. Father, forgive them for they know not. People who give bad is just because they don't know. Really, that's it. That's why once you know, then it's easy to forgive them. You forgive them because they cannot change your life because they are bad to you. They can't, they can't change it because my life belongs to God. You see? So let's, let's be wise and let's be kind and let's be loving. Because whatever you give out will be given to you. You give out money, money comes back to you. You give out love, love comes back to you. That's what I said. So make up your mind. Make up your mind. David said, now that I know, I'm glad. I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. I think from now on, many people will, will realize why they should really listen to this word. God bless you. I love you. But Jesus loves you more. He died for you. I didn't listen to him. And so I bless you as I release this prayer of protection. God said he, he allowed no one to hurt them. He rebuked kings for their sake. Trust me. God is jealously in love with you. And so I declare over you that the blood of Jesus is your refuge. The light of the Holy Spirit is your shield. And the love of the Father. It's a firewall. That fire is blazing so hot. 
It's a firewall of protection around you. No evil can come there. Excuse me, I'm so choked up. The enemy cannot come past that firewall or come past the blood of Jesus or come past the light of God. They can't. So stay in that place of protection. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye for now.